Well, as I said before, the investigation is very much a work in progress and the details are very sketchy. Now, one report that's just come through, uh, but as yet unconfirmed, is that the bombs may have been planted in pressure cookers, the kind of pressure cookers used, used for making risotto or paella at home. Well, we just don't know whether it's true or not. Uh, but of course, what we're hearing more and more is that these bombs were very much homemade bombs. And we're waiting for the police to give us any more details that they come up with throughout the day. But before we talk about the possible motives and who might have been behind this, let's talk to two eyewitnesses who were actually here. I have with me Abby Griffiths. She's a television presenter from London who is running the Boston Marathon and, and Fatma Tanis, a student of journalism in this city who actually took some of the footage that we saw in Faisal's report and that has been played all day long on television in this country and around the world. Let me start with you, Abby. You were running the marathon, mm -hmm. which is exhausting enough as it is. You'd finished the marathon. What happened then? Well, I'd come through the finish line about 10 minutes prior to the explosion. And when you finish a marathon, there is a protocol and you're ushered through, you collect water, a medal, you retrieve your bags. And it was at that moment that I heard the bomb go off. And I have to say, I had this sixth sense that it was something very bad. It was like a sound was I'd never heard Was it a loud bang? Before. Yeah, it was so loud. It was very eerie. Um, you knew it was serious. The ground underneath my foot shook slightly and everyone was just looking around quite bewildered with a sense of unknowing initially. Um, that changed quite quickly afterwards where it suddenly became a state of chaos. And your boyfriend had also run the marathon, but he was ahead of you. Yeah, he was ahead of me and now it's very fortuitous, but he didn't run the time that he predicted that he would. And if he had, that might have meant that he came back round to the finish line to watch me and cheer me through. I mean, it's a whole set of circumstances that you, you just don't want to think about, really. And you missed it by 10 minutes. Let me turn to you, Fatma. You were, where were you standing and what made you immediately decide to do what you do, which is to film it? Uh, I was standing about 50 feet uh, from where the uh, bomb went off. 50 feet? Yes. Uh, I was on the other side of the finish line. So on that's the... from here to the other side of the road? Yes, there. exactly, yes. Uh, and. Um, at first, when I, when I heard the bomb go off, I thought maybe, you know, what the, the big jumbo TV had fallen or some sort of generator, uh, an accident. Uh, then the second bomb went off and I saw people uh, running and some had cuts on their faces, many were crying, and that's when I thought it was serious. And uh, for a second there I froze and then I thought I, I should just go see what happens and uh, I took my camera with me. How did you feel inside? Well, I was very, uh, I was very worried. Uh, I didn't know what was, what was going to happen. Uh, I was just going, you know. I didn't really think too much about it. Yeah. And and did, were there injured people lying around all over the place? Describe yes. the scene. I guess uh, as as I was getting closer, uh, there were first drops of blood on the ground and people with minor injuries. And as I got closer to uh, the area of explosion, I saw major injuries, uh, some people had lost their limbs, there was a lot of blood on the ground and uh, I think a lot of uh, police and runners who were there, they, they just rushed and they were uh, try applying pressure to the wounds and everyone was just trying to help around. I'm going to leave it there, I'm afraid. Uh, Fatima Tanis and Abigail, thanks very much.